Let's begin, if we can, with the 19. Yes. Uh, rewind the tape. Okay. Where, where were you? I was at what, first what were Boston, you doing? The first, I was at First Boston, and I was an option trader. And I was trading a lot of things, mainly fixed income options and currencies. And uh, <coughs> currency options were extremely uh, inexpensive at the time, during that period, for some weird reason particularly in for out-of-the-money options, for options that were remote. So I had accumulated a few of these. I also accumulated a very large amount of out-of-the-money options in treasuries uh, and in uh, short-term fixed income for no other reason than they were much cheaper than I had seen in the past, and I was happy buying them there. So I had a large portfolio of these, and I was effectively short volatility. People don't fail to understand that I was, I, I would have been harmed by a small move. You see, I, would, I was set up to be harmed by a small move and gain you know, if the move continues to something very large. And, and it was a very nice way to earn money if nothing happens, lose money if something mild happens, and of course make a lot of money if something huge happens. And, and that kind of position allows you to accumulate a lot of options in the tails. So, so that day, walking there, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I was hardly looking at stocks, focusing on fixed income. And then you had to remember, during that period, stock options were something very artisanal. It was a very small market. Not that many people traded equity options because there was no money there. There was no liquidity, no depth. Fixed income op options, on the other hand, were huge. We came out of a big deficit, if you recall, a, a, a big inflation in the 70s. And in the 80s, you had so many bonds outstanding that that was what you did when you wanted to trade. If you went into equities, it was, you know, because you couldn't, probably you couldn't get on a, they wouldn't let you in on a fixed income floor. So that was, and we could trade in my department, equity options, but there was no big volume for us. So it was an artisanal thing. Um, and later on, when I became a pit trader, I was taking a sabbatical. It wasn't, you know, it was to become an artisan and have a nice little life, you know, working my own hours, sort of like the Uber driver of, of that business, you see, like a freelance trader. And you realize they're all freelance traders. So in that space, fixed income, um, uh, equity options. So this is why there was no, there, there was no big, uh, we didn't hear big stories then. Fixed income was very large. Uh, another uh, uh, thing we gotta remember that portfolios were very large at the time and it was options were driven mostly by big uh, cover drives, like some people selling calls. Nobody was interested in puts, so on options should a collapse happens and there was no big liquidity. So the action was in currencies and fixed income. Now, at what point during the day <laughs> did you come to realize what was actually happening? At no point. <laughs> when you're trading, it's like in a battle, you see? Sort of like when I'm on TV. When, when, you, when I'm on TV, I don't know during the episode what's going on. It's later on that I realized, you know, what I said, you see, you're concentrating. So like you're solving a math problem. You don't know, you don't know your surrounding. But I remember it was a state of heightened concentration. I was 30 years younger. It was 30 years ago. So you can imagine you're in a state of concentration all day and didn't eat, knew something was going on, but didn't think about it. Didn't think about it in these terms. But you saw prices going down. I saw prices going and down volatility. and they kept going and, and people were panicking, hey, it keeps going. And, uh, and someone came to me and, he, and, and made a remark, he said, don't they know that Six Sigmas are something you, you don't observe more than once per lifetime? Um, I said, uh, no, the market doesn't know it. <laughs> I remember that that was a joke. The guy was visibly suffering and uh, in his own portfolio. And this, but I was concentrating. It's very strange, these things, when you concentrate for eight hours. And in, in my career, I've had six or seven of these, like when Saddam invaded, um, uh, Kuwait. So I had to go to the office at like 2 a.m. and I remember it was a state of concentration for about 15, 16 hours. 
and, and didn't know, didn't really think about the event in, in, in these terms till, till I, I took stock later. So it's the same thing with, with the stock market crash.